In this video, I'll be introducing you to radicals and roots. First, we're going to talk about square roots. The definition of a square root is a is equal to the square root of b if and only if a squared is equal to b. And this is for a and b in the real numbers, and a and b are both greater than or equal to zero. Now, the symbol that you see here is called a radical symbol, and the number or expression that you see inside the radical symbol is called the radicand. For example, we have 5 is equal to the square root of 25, since 5 to the second power is equal to 25. A square root is the inverse of squaring a number. You could think of it as the opposite operation. Please take a moment and write this definition down on your worksheet. Now we have two different types of square roots, and these are our principal and our negative square roots. The regular symbol, that radical sign, means principal square root or the positive square root. But if you see the radical sign with a negative in front of it, that is asking for the negative square root. You can think of the radical sign as parentheses, and if you have a negative on the outside, it just negates what's on the inside. For example, if we have the square root of 81, that's equal to positive 9, but if we have the negative square root of 81, that is equal to negative 9. Now, square roots are not the only type of root that we'll be looking at. For every exponent that you can imagine, there's a corresponding root that goes along with it. Here's an example of a cube root. We have 2 to the third power is equal to 8, and the corresponding cube root would be cube root of 8 is equal to 2. Again, notice that they're just opposite operations. Now, cube root is not the only other type of root. We can have any root, and we call these nth roots. By definition, a is equal to the nth root of b if and only if a to the nth power is equal to b. And for this definition, a and b are real numbers. n that you see in this little elbow of the symbol is called the index, and it determines the type of root that you have. Now, n can be an even number or an odd number. If n is even, then the root itself can be only a non-negative number, which means greater than or equal to zero, and the radicand, what's inside the radical symbol, also can't be negative. However, if n is odd, then a and b can be either positive or negative and we will see examples of both. But please take a moment and write down this definition on your worksheet. All right, let's take a look at some examples. The first one we see, we have the cube root of negative 64. And again, notice the index is odd, so it is possible that we can take the root of a negative, and that is giving us a negative 4. Now that's because of when we raise negative 4 to the third power, we get negative 64. The next example you see is the fourth root of 81, and that is equal to 3, because 3 to the fourth is equal to 81. The third example we see is the fifth root of 32, which is equal to 2, because 2 to the fifth power is equal to 32. And finally, the last example we see is the square root of negative 64. Now, this is not a real number because no number that we square will ever be negative. Whenever you square a number, it is always positive. And if you're not sure, think about a negative number, for example, negative 8, and multiply it by itself. Negative 8 times negative 8 will give you a positive. So it is not possible for a square root to have a negative radicand, nor is it possible for any even root, like the fourth root, to have a negative radicand. We just simply say that it is not a real number. All right, so this concludes your video on the introduction to radicals. You have some examples on your worksheet that I would like you to fill in. They're similar to the examples that you saw in this video, um, but they're not quite the same. So take a look at them, look at the definitions that you see, and do the best you can.